and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to talk about one of the services that the city offers um, for our children, for our families. It is before and after school programming at elementary and middle schools. And my guest is the manager of that program, Jason Samuels. Welcome. Good, good morning, Ms. McCormick. Now, I think it's only fair at this time to say that you have a dual role <laughs> and yes. that they're overlapping a little bit yes. in, in your paid job and in your elected capacity as a school board member. Yes, ma'am. Yes. That's really got a great confluence here because we're talking about, in some ways, some people think of after school programs as just child care. OK, my kid's too young to be a latchkey kid. I can't let him or her go home alone. But it's more than that. It's more. Exactly. And so what, we, what, what, we're, we're, what we're trying to do, we're trying to educate the community regarding the school age program that we're not a daycare facility. We are a program that offer um, different services to families, um, different enrichment activities, educational services and so forth, uh, such as we have enrichment um, program to focus on children who are not doing well in reading and math. And we have a partnership with Hampton City School, the 21st Century Program with, with Mr. Rogers. And so what we do in the after school program, once we have those students that are targeted who are not doing well in reading and math, we have two days of um, enrichment for those children where we invite the 21st Century Program to come in and work one-on-one -on -one with um, those children. In addition to that, we also offer yoga, we also offer um, taekwondo, and modern and classical um, dance. Really? I yes, we do. No See, I didn't know that. Exactly, exactly. And so it's an opportunity for parents to um, enroll their children in the program knowing that their children are going to be in a safe and structured environment. Once again, this is not daycare. We also have individual to um, provide um, um, assistance with homework. So we have a structured day. Once the children come into the program, the first half hour is done with homework. So you're talking about after school, because there are yeah. some schools, and I know that the school st start time has changed, the school start but there time. are people who need to be at work. <laughs> and so yes. beforehand, it is probably quieter and reading. Yes. You know, the morning time. The morning the time people. is spent with also um, the before care also focus on homework. So children who did not do their homework the, the night prior. <laughs> which they, we hope they do. Which we hope they do. We have individuals to assist them with their homework. And also it's a time for children to start getting ready for that school. You get your mind Get set, your mind settled you know. so they have activities for children that they have Legos, they have card games and so forth. And once again, our programs are within the schools. It's so much easier yeah. for parents. There's, you know, no yes. transportation. You're dropping them off at the school. You're picking them up mm -hmm. from the school. Everything is right there within the and school. Integrated. And our, our hours of operation start at 6:30 in the morning. So parents who are in the military, parents who have to be a job be, early yeah. in the morning, they can drop drop their children off as early as 6:30, knowing that their children once again are going to be in a safe and structured environment. And in the afternoon, our school age program start at 2.30, um, depending on the <laughs> dismissal early. time right, of right. school. Because as you know, Hampton City School is on a staggered dismissal. So if, if school is dismissed at 1 or 1.30 or 2 o'clock, our um, after school program Im immediately opens after school dismisses. And the children walk from their classroom directly into the cafeteria or into the gym and where the school age. It's a familiar age. situation it for is. them. They know their way around, they know the place, exactly. they know they know the other kids. And I yes. think that helps make it easier and more fun. It does. You know, there's some social And as you said as well. that um, children are very familiar with the staff and so forth because many of our staff are teachers. We, ha we hire a lot of um, Hampton City School teachers in a part-time basis to serve in the school age program in the after, sc after school and before um, program. So they're familiar with the staff that are within the schools and they know the structure of the program. I think it's so important, well, a couple of things. One is 
classrooms have gotten much more structured than they were when I was a kid. And because of the focus on SOLs and learning, I think sometimes it's very hard for kids to sit still yes. as long as they have exactly. to. So you guys give them some opportunity we to do. let that out. We do. <laughs> we do. Over. Although it is structured and there are schedules that we um, adhere to within our program, we have approximately uh, 45 minutes time block in the afternoon where children can just do anything they want. They can play um, 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 games on their iPads, they can um, play card games, or they can go outside and do recreational activities. We also have a yoga specialist within our program, um, Elizabeth, and she goes to the different sites and um, have yoga with the children to just to decompress from that day. Yeah, and have that physical movement, but yes. controlled. I mean, it's a great idea. It is. And then you have homework. And for a working parent, to me, the best thing in the world is when your kids have already done your home, their homework because you don't have that battle you when you get home. With you can yes. enjoy family time. And we make sure that the children are doing their homework. And one of the great thing about being in the school is we know exactly what they need to be. <laughs> you know what the homework we, is. We know what the homework <laughs> is. And so we ask the children, have you done your homework? Please take out your homework activity book. And, and they do their homework, and once they've done their homework, they have recreational activities or enrichment activities to participate in. So there is always something to be done. Sure, and if they're doing accelerated reader programs or reading goals, you can help reinforce we those. We can help reinforce those because we have many of our teachers, many of our staff who are teachers within the school division. One of the fantastic also partnership we have is with Hampton City Schools, the curriculum um, program, where we have professional development for our staff. So twice a year, Dr. John Caggiano, who is the deputy superintendent, mm -hmm. um, meet with our staff and provide professional development when it comes to curriculum. And we, our focus this year is reading and math. So they, provide support and those um, resources for us to use within the, um, the school age program, similar to what is being used in the classroom. So it's reinforced in the before and after care program. So do you see kids in this program doing better in school because of it? I mean, is there is there a crossover benefit there? It is, it is. Um, we have done studies um, working with the 21st Century Program, uh, Mr. Rogers, and I recently met with him and we reviewed the data from last year. And the data shows that children who participated in the school age program, their reading and math scores primarily are higher because they get that additional support from the 21st century program. And so uh, we are able to track our um, children in the program and it shows that their SOL scores and in, in math and reading tends to be higher than children who are not participating in the school age program. So it's a benefit for children to participate in that program. That is a huge thing for families. And it is very cost efficient because there's no there's no profit here. <laughs> the city doesn't make money. The, the city, city yes. loses only a small amount, I think, on your guys' salaries. But the, yes. the um, cost of the program pays for your your staff that, it does. that is in the schools. And it is a very affordable program. If you compare our um, the cost of our program to programs that are privately um, operated, the, the cost for our before care is only $20 per week. Yeah, 20, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. And the cost for the after school program or the um, after school pro, um, care is only $45 per week. So that is very, very affordable for our parents, knowing that their children are going to be in a very structured and safe environment where they know that there's no transportation required, there's no additional cost for all of the enrichment and social and recreational activities that we offer. There's, there are no additional cost. And also, um, we also have a scholarship um, um, funding available for parents who may not be able to afford the $45. If they meet an income threshold, they are eligible, to, eligible for um, um, tuition assistance. So, that's huge. And that also gets to the middle school that you guys have expanded into middle schools where the after school program didn't used to be. Exactly. Because legally, 
parents can leave those kids alone, but yes. it may not be the best it thing. It may not be the best choice for them to do so. Right. Yes. And But financially, it can be quite a hardship. Yes. So mitigating that is a huge help. It is. It is. It is. And this year, we put a conscious effort in identifying um, pretend, um, families that are in middle school that really need the support. So we, are, we work closely with Spratley. Um, um, Jones Middle Schools, uh, and with the exception of um, Lindsay and Sims, because they have the 21st century program in those schools. But we work with um, middle schools, and uh, as you know, middle schools, you know, children, they have their challenges, they're transitioning into becoming teenagers. They don't want to be associated in a daycare program. Right, right. It so cannot have that daycare. It cannot label. have that daycare associated with it. So, what we have to do, we have to start thinking about how can we focus on the middle school children and what are their, their needs. So what we did this year, and this is the first year that we've done this, we've surveyed middle school children and asked them this question, so what would you like to see in an aftercare program? And from that um, survey and from their responses, we actually designed an after school program um, primarily for children. And one thing that they said they wanted was dance, hip hop. Yep. Hip hop. So what we did, we've partnered with um, Beauty for Ashes. Um, oh, I love that. Yes, <laughs> David, Mr. David Riddick. And next year, we're going to have a hip hop modern dance enrichment activities for children in middle schools. See, and this is where you, you see several initiatives coming together to make a huge difference in the community if it sticks because you've got education which is absolutely crucial yes. to teaching people to be productive citizens and to get ahead and to you know be who they need to be and it's one of the basic functions of government you have child care and healthy families under that youth education and families banners. You're enriching the family, you're supporting the family, mm -hmm. but when it comes to that middle school piece, it's also an anti-youth violence because that's yes. where kids get lost is middle yes. school. If they don't have to have supervision, mm -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of kids go off track, and it is completely normal, it is normal. to yes. experiment and to try to figure things out, and yes. we don't want them to fall through those cracks. And that's the reason why, you know, when I became the manager for the school age program, and we look at the program and the services that we offer, we were offering services that we believe that was in the best interest of children. But I said, you know what? We are serving a population. Let's ask that population, what would you like to see in this program? Right. And build the program around their needs. And not only the children um, we survey, we, we also survey the families, um, the parents and guardians, and ask them, what would you like to see in a um, uh, program within the, um, the middle schools? And from that, we're building a program next year to make sure that we accommodate their needs. And, and as you stated, um, within, the, within the healthy families, there are so many different services and resources that are offered. And, and, and I, I would consider it as a one-stop shop. Um, once you're in within that community of um, the healthy families, there are so many resources that are available. And we have Ms. Sinithia White, who is the mm -hmm. director of the um, Youth Violence Prevention Program. She's within our building. And she, we also have a partnership with her, working closely with her, where she goes into the middle school and provide um, services to um, children to prevent them from going down that path. Right. So we have to provide preventive services instead of always reacting to a situation that occurs. And mm -hmm, so we have mm -hmm. to in, uh, make sure that our children know that there are other opportunities out here other than in the streets. Yeah, it is really, you know, the the perfect combination of things that serves more than one mm -hmm. goal for our community yes. at a really affordable rate. Mm -hmm. And the um, the scholarship process is important, I yeah, think. I don't is, know how you're funded or <laughs> um, how you're managing to yeah. do that, but that is huge. And it's, we are able to do so because of the kindness of Hampton City Council, um, where they say, you know what, we need to make sure that we're reaching every family in Hampton, every family. And we have families that are able to afford 
the, the, the service, but then we have families who aren't able to afford the services, and we need to extend the services to those individuals. So that's the reason why we came up with the, the scholarship um, program. And what we, um, we do not um, normally announce that we have a scholarship program because it, the funds are limited. So if we identify a family through, um, once again, a partnership with Hampton City Schools, if they have a family and they know that this family needs the before and after care services through the counseling department or the family uh, um, engagement specialist. Mm -hmm. They then have the opportunity to complete an application on, be on behalf of that family, submit the application to the program. We, re we will review the application to make sure that they meet the income guideline. And so we, we, we have seen an increase in those applications. And I believe just this past month, we received, I think, three applications for the um, scholarship program, and those families were approved. And so, you know, it, our philosophy at Healthy Families and also with the, the Department of Human Services, because we fall under the umbrella, mm -hmm. is to ensure that every family in Hampton are independent and self-sufficient that because that is how this community is going to grow right. they can't be always families dependent on the system so we have to start at the bottom and work our way up and education is absolutely, absolutely. the key in that yes because every child has the potential. Every child has the potential to be successful mm -hmm. and we have to make sure that we nurture that and we provide them the resources to be successful. And I, I just, you know, we're taping this at a different time. Most people think about the before and after school programs at the beginning of the school, school year, year when yes. they enroll. But people's circumstances can change or yes. people may think they don't need it or can't afford it and can come into the program or out of the program or use it at certain times if they're seasonal employees or, you know, whatever. Yes. You're very flexible. We are very flexible. We have open enrollment the entire school year. And then we will have also our um, school year enrollment start in July the 1st. We will start accepting application for the new school year 2017-2018 coming up. However, we have open enrollment throughout the school year. And so an in individual, their circumstances may change. They may not need daycare or so forth. Similar to my circumstances, next week I will be attending a conference in Denver. And myself and my wife won't be available. So next week, next week between March the 25th and so and the 29th, my son will be enrolled in the program mm -hmm. for those days that I won't be able to pick him up after school because we have to make arrangements. So um, circumstances and situation like that, families can take advantage of, hey, That's I just great. need the service for three days. I just need the service for two days. And then, you know, they may know that once they experience the, the service, they may say, you know what? This would, provides something that's worthwhile. Exactly. Getting. Not to have the homework fight, but to have more calm evenings is worth a lot for people who have any Let us disposable the homework. income at all. Right. Let us handle right. the homework and decompress our children in the afternoon by mm -hmm. going through yoga, taekwondo, yeah. and have those activities, recreational activities, to burn that energy off. So when they leave this after school program and at 6 o'clock when we dismiss, they go home, take their shower, eat, and go directly to bed. Wonderful. Read for a little while. Read have a little family or game time. Exactly. Yes, that is important. That, that is <laughs> important. Know, At I least know. read two books. And, and that is required in my house. My son is six, and every afternoon, evening, and before he goes to bed, he has to read two books. Mm. Yes. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. I hope you have learned a little bit more about this program and understand while it does care for your child, it is not child care. It is learning, enrichment, motivation, and a, a great place for them to be for their futures. Thank you so much for watching.